Yeah. Okay, so here we are, and I am so excited to be talking to my dear friend and revered colleague, and you'll hear me say that a lot, Christine Morgenstern Shin. Um, and I'm so happy you're joining us, whether it be live, if we're live, or for the recording, uh, because today's discussion is meant to be timely. The holidays are approaching, and many of you have reached out asking for support in navigating holidays that are so very food-focused and food-related. The stress around the holidays are real. And the freedom promise, as you know, is about managing triggers and the behaviors that started out as a solution to do just that. In order to do so, we have to learn to find safety within as we open ourselves to healing. This is why I am so excited to introduce you to my dear friend, Christine. She's here today to talk a little into the science of safety and share some really exciting news. But before we dive in, I'd love to share a little bit about what she does in the world. Christine specializes in empowering high performers, heavy thinkers, and I love this, recovering perfectionists to navigate holistically through chronic stress, high functioning anxiety, and weight management. Her focus lies in brain health, neuroscience, and positive psychology, as well as the interconnectedness between mental health, gut health, hormone imbalance and epigenetics. As an integrative wellness practitioner of over 25 years, Christine is more passionate than ever by drawing from both Western and Eastern healing modalities. Her approach is unique, bio-individualized and foremost rooted in love. And I just wanna to be totally transparent and sharing with you that I personally have experienced Christine's amazing approach. So that's why I'm so excited to bring her to you today. Hey, Christine. Hello. Hi, Mindy. It's such a pleasure to be here. And I first just want to thank you for sharing me with your community because I know they are very sacred to you. And it's I'm just ecstatic to be here today. Oh, I'm so happy. So before we get to your exciting news about helping others navigate chronic stress, how did you come into doing this work? Sure. Uh, my, my why is, is pretty big and it really drives my passion. And, you know, I, I like to just sprinkle in a, a, a little of the highlights of my story that's more relative to your, to your group. And um, I, I do want to preface, you know, I came from a loving home and had a lot of fun, right, when I was younger. However, I also lived with um, life-threatening depression. And it was almost like I was two different people and um, it was hard and it was scary, you know, and, and it went on for many, many years. And, and, you know, I know in your community, people are struggling with different, different type of challenges. It could be along the same lines or not, but they, they you know, it's, it's tough. And uh, I eventually found uh, functional medicine and functional nutrition, of course, and then uh, dived into yoga therapy, Eastern modalities. And this is what helped me heal. I, I actually, in 2015, was able to um, move from any of my depression, anxiety, ADH, or birth control meds. Big disclaimer, not um, advocating that anyone does that. That is definitely a doctor conversation. But my point is I was able to look at other ways to help support myself that was complementary to what I was originally doing. And, you know, there's always a diff different ways to do this. That's why it's so by individual, right? And I learned that a lot of people have this underlying stress and intertwined with my depression. And this is the first time actually I'm ever saying this. Um, I, I was uh, bulimic. And I was for four years. And, um, you know, that's, a ch as you know, because you're, you're the specialist here in this, that is um, very challenging and um, it's, it's, it's a tough situation, right? And so I am, um, I I'm not in that field, obviously you are my expert there, but my point is I've been through what some of your community has been through 
And, and I, I want to say just as a person to a person, never mind practitioner, there's always a way to get, you know, to, to, to healing, to be able to heal. And so I'm very motivated that around the holidays, you know, the, the two things I struggled with are three things we should say um, that tends to get a little stronger around the holidays, whether it's anxiety, depression, um, you know, eating disorders or disordered eating. It, it's a lot because we're, we're, you know, with our family and, and, you know, sometimes family, we don't see the family that we're with. Right. And then there's a lot of food. And, and so um, that's why I'm out here today. And that's why I'm, I'm, you know, really dedicated to helping people connect more with their bodies and um, through the science of, through the science of safety, which we're going to talk about a little today. So. Yeah. Oh, first of all, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, you said that you've never shared that before. And I, I know how hard that can be. So uh -huh. my heart is with you. I really, really appreciate that. And yes, it's about feeling safe in our bodies, right? Mm -hmm. Really about feeling safe in our bodies as you so much picked up on the, the challenges that this community faces. Mm -hmm. Um, the frustrations that they are facing related to weight, whether it's too little or too much, basically are just symptoms of their experiences, um, right? But we know that these symptoms are, you know, I say contributing factors to and or a result of their behaviors with food and in all cases driven by stress and emotion and not feeling safe in our bodies our brains are brilliant and they look to protect us with mm -hmm. such behaviors. So let, let's address a little bit about the, the safety piece. You know, no, I, I would love to talk into this and, and hopefully give some nice takeaways that um, your community could use, you know, during even this next week. Um, so the science of safety is, is uh, another name for the polyvagal theory. So we're, we're going to kind of brush over the sciencey part of it and just kind of get to, I'll explain a little bit of the why so it makes sense to people. Mm -hmm. right. But, you know, I like to explain to my clients that if they, if they use the, what the polyvagal theory is, they can become active operators of their nervous system. And this is really important um, for us to be able to feel safe inside, okay? And, Interestingly enough, a lot of people think that the stories we tell ourselves and like how we look at the world, you know, through whatever lens that is, it comes from our brain. And it actually comes first from our nervous system. And it's called your autonomic nervous system. And, and um, a lot of people might, may have heard of the sympathetic nervous system, which is fight or flight, right? And then the parasympathetic, which is rest and digest they're components of the autonomic nervous system. And we're actually gonna go like a little bit, a layer different, because as you know, you know the, the vagus nerve, if anyone hasn't heard of the vagus nerve, it's the wandering nerve, it's the longest nerve in your body, the 10th cranial nerve. And the, navis, the vagus nerve talks to your brain 80 to 20. So a lot of the talking is from, you know, maybe your gut heart, or your, I mean, your heart brain or your or gut brain on up. So my point is things that we feel in our body, that's what happens first. So the autonomic information goes up from the body to the brain. And then the brain creates a story to make sense of what the heck's happening in the body. And this is really important for, for clients to know because they just think it's them. Like they might not, under, oh, this is how I'm wired or, you know, there's nothing I can do. This is, you know, how I am, you know, that type of thing. And the beautiful thing about the science of safety is we can provide tools so people can reframe what's going on and have more safety inside. Does that make sense? Makes beautiful sense. And you explained it so beautifully. And, and I like to say, you know, if you're going to change the story, you first start by changing your state. And we have three states in our body. And 
you know, we talked about the sympathetic. That's a lot of times when we're distressed and we're trying to get away from something. And then the parasympathetic, that works in two levels. Um, the top level, and maybe just picture a ladder. That's the easiest way to explain it um, without getting in too deep, okay? But the top level is when, so it's called ventral vagal, but that's not really important. It's how we feel, right? It's when we feel safe, engaged, social, you know, when we feel that warmth, okay? And we have curiosity. Right. That's the feeling. That's where we want to be. The middle rung is that fight or flight. So when, you know, we're, that we're distressed, um, we might've had a trigger, like, got, you know, the heart rate starts getting up. And then the bottom rung of the ladder is called shutdown or um, immobilization. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, there might be a little depression. We might just be frozen from a thought, you know, a trigger, right? Yeah, well, I was gonna ask you, uh, you know, we have flight, we have fright and we have freeze. Mm -hmm. And very often the freeze happens when we are in overwhelm. Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and the beautiful thing is, if somebody is in freeze, you know, we're able to teach our clients how to move up the rungs of the ladder because how our body works, you can't hop up, you can't pass a rung, okay? So we, we know that from a science standpoint, okay? So the point is um, we can provide tools for the person to move up. And I just wanna provide just a couple because we're just kind of sprinkling, right? Yeah. Without getting too science-y. But if somebody just say, say um, you were triggered, you know, whether it was food, it doesn't matter what, what the situation is, but you know, you start feeling anxious, okay, inside the body. The, the, I would go to, and this is something you would do when you're in a, in a comfortable state, but it's really important to um, write down a list of danger cues and safety cues, okay? And, and I would suggest you do this when you're in a very safe space because it, it's not triggering. And because this is bio-individual to, to each person, you know, my safety cues might not be yours, okay? So a, a, a safety cue for me would be petting my dog, okay? Instant, instant, you know, calms me down. That might be completely opposite. That might be a danger cue to someone else, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'd suggest your, your audience might explore that, writing this list. And if they're in freeze, like you were saying, and we want to move up to sympathetic, then look at whatever safety cue is comfortable and then go to that. And in some stages, like if somebody's really depressed, going for a walk might be too much, but visualizing walking might be wonderful or lying, you know, on, in a field or on the, wherever your happy place is, right? Visualizing that, that could be wonderful. So the point is we want to slowly move up the ladder so we can get to where we're feeling safe and sound. Does that make sense? It makes great sense. Okay. So let's, let's fast forward this a little bit yeah. to this week. Okay. Sure. Sure. So the holiday meal is coming. Mm -hmm. um, the, and hopefully the more people are getting ready to, to enjoy and experience the holiday in person, right? So this means um, having to feel perhaps exposed if they're on a new sort of eating plan, if they're, if they're showing up with a different relationship to food than they did before. You know, after all, so much of our behavior is tied to our identity and identity is reflected in our behavior. Mm -hmm. um, people might make comments about, oh, gee, I see you've lost weight. Oh, gee, do you need to be eating that? Mm -hmm. um, have some of this, have some more of that. And this sparks a lot of stress. And, and just the thought of going into the holidays could be really triggering. I, I'd love to hear your take on this. I know my advice would be to take deep breaths, mm -hmm. to go into the holiday with a plan, mm -hmm. um, perhaps a little script mm -hmm. about, you know, what you would feel safe saying. And I often rehearse that with my clients. Um, but I, I think it's about going in, relaxing into the experience. Mm -hmm. 
No, I, I, I definitely agree with you. I think having a plan or having at least a framework because something might just pop up that, oh wait, this this isn't the way I thought it was going to go, right? So I, I love the the uh, idea of having that script, so you don't have to think on the spot, you know. So I think that's really beautiful. And the taking the deep breathing even a step further, maybe simply just if it's comfortable for someone to breathe in and out of their nose, simply doing a longer exhale. Yes. Just keeping it very simple, but just that longer exhale is going to go miles in terms of a quick type of connection with the nervous system. And so it doesn't have to be, you know, deep, deep breaths. Um, and some people like counting, they might inhale for two, exhale for four or five or six, whatever is great for them. But, um, but that longer exhale, um, think about, so, it's called a niyasa in yoga therapy, but that's not important. But the thing is, when we place our hand on different parts of our body, our brain and our heart, our heart brain and our, our head brain go to that spot. So this could be, it could be like, I like doing my heart center. Some people might go right for the heart. It might be just holding your bicep. It doesn't really matter. It might be um, the crisscross is really good. Anytime we're crossing, this is a somatic movement and this connects the a somatic movement helps you calm down a little more uh helps the your parasympathetic starts connecting okay so any cross patterning is one so it's like you're giving yourself a hug okay yeah, yeah. so something simple because it's bio individual so think you know you might even walk out of the room go to the go to the bathroom right do whatever you want to do close your eyes exhale and whatever you know you might have um certain affirmations or certain words that you connect with you might be like i am enough or what, whatever it may be that's really empowering for the person because the whole point is we want to connect with our heart connect with our nervous system feel that empowerment and just walk back out it's almost like you have a beautiful little secret that no one in your family knows about and you just go back out into the gathering and and you know find something that's uplifting for you and maybe talk to someone else you yeah. know that type of thing but yeah. and and it's okay the body's oh, helpful i'm sorry to interrupt it's okay to excuse yourself from a conversation that makes you uncomfortable mm -hmm. so this would be a wonderful excuse to walk away from the conversation that is uncomfortable and go into another room or the restroom and practice that deep conscious resting and grounding breath mm -hmm. humming is also wonderful to stimulate the vagus nerve yes, yes beautiful and, and get into parasympathetic and i know this sounds funny but you know we, if you we've all seen a dog kind of shake it off that is their, their autonomic nervous system uh re-regulating so i know it sounds hilarious so maybe you do it in the bathroom but if you just shake it, it is very helpful. And you could just laugh at yourself. It's not a big deal. Like but, that, right? Yeah, just shake, shake it off. Just shake. You can shake as little as much as you uh -huh. want. Shake your leg, shake the other leg. But that it, it's, you don't have to think too much. Your body is going, because your, your, your body is trying to regulate. Your body's always trying to make you feel safe. And that's, that's the key. And this is just one simple, funny way that works, you know? And it's just light, because, you know, we're, we're going into some, you know, a lot of times the holidays isn't as joyous for everyone. And we're, we're going into times that if we can add a little levity and, and, you know, shine in a little light on it and a little laughter, then that could be positive too, right? Exactly. And, and the last thing I'm going to say, good food for thought, is that saying no to what makes you feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. is saying yes to yourself. Oh, that's and beautiful. There's nothing more empowering than that. So, Christine, tell us what you have going on this month. Yeah, so I have, and I think the timing's pretty going to be pretty good or pretty fun. Um, I have a free five-day stress detox challenge, love and it. I love helping people, you know, con navigate that chronic stress. And I thought right after the holidays, like, what's a better time? And then almost to kind of prep us for the next holiday, right? And the beautiful thing is um, I have it, so I'm giving a lot of choices. 
So, you know, every day you just kind of pick and choose what you want to implement because we're all going to be different with this. And then at the end of the week, it's, it's going to be beautiful to see like someone might have better sleep, whereas someone might say, gosh, I just feel more grounded or I was able to talk to someone that I didn't think I could or, but the, the bottom line is it's, it's primarily connecting with yourself on a, on a deeper level, de-stressing, how to ground your nervous system in, in further ways, how we talked a little today. And a lot of us have that mental chatter that, that you know, so learning how to maybe simmer that a little if you want. So it's, it's and I'm, um, I'm, I provide a little workbook. I, ma I made it so simple, I hope. Um, uh, the night before each day, I'm doing a 20 minute live and to set you up for the following day. Right. If it's not feasible, and you can ask me any health question in there um, that's related to the, you know, to the, the stress detox. And um, if for some reason you, you can't make it or you're not into lives, you, it's going to be in the Facebook group or, and or it's going to be emailed too. So I, I wanted to make it accessible for everyone um, just because we all have different ways of some people want to get up there and ask a question and other people would prefer the email, you know. Okay, good. And we know we can't always depend on Facebook Live as we learned <laughs> this afternoon. Exactly. So how can we register and how can our viewers and listeners find you if they want to dive deeper? Sure, sure. So the uh, my website is uh, radiantheart.health and um, we can put that somewhere in the notes. Yes, we will. Then the uh to register for the challenge very easy just uh, type in stress detox challenge.com stress and go right to my page mm -hmm. stress detox challenge.com and your website to find you and perhaps work with you is radiantheart.health correct Yep. I love it. Well, I thank you so much for being with me today. I thank you and our listeners so much for your patience. Um, I don't think we showed up on the live feed. I did. I'm sorry if it appeared rude, but I wanted to type into the group that we were having technical difficulties oh, and the recording will follow. So that will be there. You'll find this recording on all of my social media platforms and I just wish you all a blessed holiday. Make it the way you deserve it to be. You all deserve that fully nourished life and you know how I feel. What truly nourishes you, you're not gonna find in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So feast on, yes, feast on the life that is yours right now. Christine, I wish you a wonderful holiday and I know I'll be talking to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. And you as well. Thank you so much. And um, I, again, uh, much gratitude to you for having the conversation. Oh, gratitude to you for all you bring to the world and personally for your friendship. Thank you. Bye, I'll see you, you soon. Bye-bye.